All right, we got Om Om Omar Om Omizi Omar. I I I don't like saying it. I can't get his name right. It says Omir Omir. How about I say that? Omar Omir. Anyway, I don't even know what this thing right here. Sai. He? I don't know. And this is destroying their audience overnight. I don't know what's going on, but let's see what um this young brother is talking about. Everyone's beautiful. I just told you Atlanta's um, clapped. Yeah. I never. <laughs> I'm not saying everyone's beautiful. I just told you Atlanta's okay. clapped. Yeah. I never said everyone's beautiful. I just said I'm not seeing anybody say it. I've been waiting an entire week to record a video on the Shits and Gigs podcast because Oh, that I, ain't I? I don't I like I, said, I don't know who I don't know who these guys are, bro. I think that this is one of the reasons why microphone prices should be absolutely through the roof. It takes years upon years to build such a massive audience with a dedicated fan base of loyal fans who are with you lock and step no matter what platform you go to. And sort of like a regular job, your digital footprint follows you wherever you go. It never goes away. It's accessible by anybody, so you're gonna have to live with the consequences of your actions. Now, the Shits and Gigs podcast is an uber popular podcast where a lot of women watch it. It has a very, very strong female fan base. And mm. guys watch it too, but this is one of the examples where- Way more females on this one. Women are like, ah, oh, you know what? These guys can have a mic. Cause trust me, as somebody who has a podcast, telling other women that you have a podcast is a total turnoff because they automatically associate you with Kevin Samuels or the whatever podcast or fresh- I like KS. Me, KS, I like KS like he is and fit or whatever the case may be but no these guys are good to go in the women demographic because they have this they got the green book they good to being an ally <laughs> Oh man! Unfortunately for them, they had to cross the pond and come on a U.S. tour where their dating preferences got brought to the mainstream, and people are upset as f about it. They went on a six-week U.S. tour where they stopped at the Poor Minds podcast where they had these things to say about Atlanta. In Atlanta, I've seen the least bodies so far. Oh, yeah. we've still got a couple days. Maybe we'll find out. But yeah, yeah. I, I've seen like two or three. Hey, but what is y'all's type though? Bad is the type. But facts. <laughs> it matters how you own it. It can be a like a. Skinny girl who wears the f out of being a skinny girl. Mm -hmm. and, she just, and then you've got a thick thing who just owns the sh out of being a thick thing. Mm -hmm. It's bad, it's bad, it's bad. Now, this is where the conversation starts to get tricky. As an Atlanta native, I only have one comment and one comment only on somebody saying that I haven't seen a lot of bad women in Atlanta. And it's you don't like black women. And let me say this, there is no problem with that. I don't expect somebody who's half Irish and half Jamaican growing up in the UK to have this affinity towards black women. Trust me, that is not what I've come here to do. But the other dark skinned gentleman is up for questioning, but let me deep dive. The Metro Atlanta area is one of the biggest areas in the US that has the highest density of African American people. We're talking at least top five here, but really like top three conversations. So a lot of people, myself including, think that the guys from the Shits and Gigs podcast came over here saw the black mecca what a lot of people would call the wakanda of the united states and saw how many black women were here and thought that there were no baddies that was a sign that bro don't like ga bro don't like my state bro don't like our state bro don't like our state bro <laughs> you don't like ga that's crazy but you know they just don't like black women. Even that weak ass explanation they gave made me and Lex from the Poor Minds podcast have an agreement. That's a PR answer. They're all beautiful if you have. Man, I'm not I, saying everyone's beautiful. I just they, told you Atlanta's okay. clap. Atlanta has a lot of transplants. So a lot of the people that live here, yeah. like you rarely run into people when you're out and stuff that are from Atlanta. You see, I would probably agree with them. Now, there are parts of Atlanta that you can go that are made of predominantly white people. But ultimately, I think that this is a jab at a lot of black people in the conversation seeing that this is the black mecca and what drea said in the conversation also makes me think that there's something wrong with these guys just a little bit because right atlanta is the home of the transplant there are a lot of people that aren't from the city of atlanta originally in atlanta there are black yeah yeah don't saying like yeah don't i'm saying that i was just about to say something like that bro like the, like people from like what texas and everyone from like they come they 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 moving this way they move up this way so you know yeah and I've been hearing, like I said, uh, you know, I got folks, I got folks that live up there, but I'm, I'm, I'm not in Atlanta. I'm like a little further down. GA baby, I like small, small little town. Black people that flock all over the world that come to Atlanta in order to live and exist because they call it the Black Mecca for a reason. It's a yeah, man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, like I said, man, people from everywhere, man, and they don't even got that. I don't know. I just be hearing so much about it too, man. Like people from from the from Georgia, even from that. I'm like, bro, it's it crazy, man. 
It crazy. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. It's a place where black people generally thrive. Now, with that being said, this was the first shovel in the dirt that had the Shits and Gigs podcast digging a hole in which they would ultimately end up burying themselves. Because I get it. Preferences are preferences. But one thing that I like to say, when that first piece fits into another piece, that puzzle makes a pattern. I don't even know what I'm really trying to say. Ultimately, these guys have a past and it started to resurface because people started digging up their clips to kind of solidify the fact that these guys do not like black women. So what is the black girlfriend effect? A guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got buzz cut, like yeah, clean he, shape up. Nah, nah, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it. Because they're so stressed <laughs> being around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. <laughs> That's why they gotta shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow a beard because there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of them. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys, do you guys, have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> Now, we're going to get into Andrew Schultz here in a second because, first of all, I think he has a mustache that will make his ancestors question him and what he believes in. But on his podcast, he primes the shits and gigs guys up to make the same exact mistake or do something completely different that would make people say, okay, that was just a one-off. It is jokes. They are clear of the black women hating allegations. And they take advantage of that, right? <laughs> We love them all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Just, really? We love them all. Yeah, that means white. Yo, who gets nah. here? <laughs> <laughs> now, mind you, preferences can be preferences. Yeah, I'm saying preferences, you know what I'm saying, you know? Jokes can be jokes, but kind of like I alluded to earlier, you got one puzzle piece over here, another puzzle piece over here, a third puzzle piece down here, and it's making this puzzle that says that you do not like a certain demographic of woman. Ultimately, it's kind of disgusting because a lot of the people that you are disparaging seem to be fans of your content. Now, we don't have their clear demographic breakdown, but I can only assume that one black man and one mixed man would have some sort of pie chart that would mostly be people that are black identify as some sort of black, whether it be African, African American, Etc. Etc. And then based off of the engagement that they get on their platform, I would go ahead and say that they have a pretty big women audience. But a lot of them did not take a liking to them getting on different people's platforms and not standing up for them, not representing them, disparaging them at any given moment, even if it was a joke that wasn't funny or was funny. They just never stood up for them. Hey, it was three. What is it? Pure, evil, and then Hausa. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the one? Who are the, who are the smart ones? I would say Yoruba's. Yoruba. And then who are like the conniving ones? I can't speak yeah, on that. Yeah, I, I can't speak on that. That's right. Yoruba's like, we're educated. Yeah. We're going to school. The house are the lazy ones. According to you. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then Ebo is what? Yeah. They're the ones that are always... They got the scams. They're the greatest scammers in history. According to you, bro. There's According no to truth you. to this at all? What, are the, what is the stereotype? We're just speaking about, like, I would, stereotypes. I would say stereotypically Nigerians as a whole are scammers. Can I tell you? I wouldn't say... Can I, tell I you? wouldn't... Can like, I tell Going yeah. up on a man's podcast who just so happens to have a mustache that would disappoint his ancestors, perpetuating stereotypes that would make your ancestors themselves look pretty doggone bad. Now, I get Crazy. that he tried to deflect. I get that there was a, a dismissal here and there, but God, it does not look good in the light when you're allowing only one person, which it only seems to be one person in these clips initiating these things. But these have got to be one-offs. I cannot believe that these guys would sit here and disrespect black women on a black women platform black people as a whole on another person's platform seemingly this is only isolated incidents these can't be things that happen on a regular basis right and this girl that i was fucking with at the time she wants mixed race kids like so she yeah, wants yeah. a black man that's all she goes for. Yeah, yeah and there's this girl that she used to watch on a tv show who was obviously black she was like oh i wish i was her she kept on saying oh, i wish i was black i wish i was black I'm thinking, jesus christ what for starters if you was black you wouldn't be getting any black men so i'm just saying <laughs> You're white, fam. You're white. You're just, winning. You're just out here white, just <laughs> with all the rights to you. Like, what is There's... greener that you're thinking, I'm missing out? I still fucked her. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been fucking her. No. No, brothers. No. Again. Many of people were critical of these things, and I gotta say that I kinda agree with them. Now I get it, everybody puts everything under the umbrella of comedy. And I think that comedy is the laziest umbrella to put things under. Comedy is the lowest form of entertainment. Anything can be funny to anybody. And with that being said, you can find something that you said that potentially could be offensive or not funny or disgusting or whatever, and put it in front of enough people until you find the person that thinks that it is funny. Therefore, it gives you this scapegoat in order to say, oh, well, 
what I said is justifiable or what I said is okay because it's funny, right? I got a laugh out of it. But ultimately, no. You see, you can be tone deaf. You can be insensitive. You can be down right disrespectful to a lot of people and you using the whole idea that oh this is comedic genius somebody laughed at it should not be an excuse for you to say downright dirty and disrespectful things and look there may be some mm. world in which we would give these guys some sort of pass as a one-off situation but it seems like they have a continued pattern of self-hatred that is displayed on their own podcast but omar they, they themselves are black people why can't this just be an incident of them drawing on their own experiences in order to make some sort of comedic efforts in order to entertain an audience well partially nasally omar is because their audience is saying that this isn't funny what they're doing is going on different platforms exposing themselves to a plethora of different people who aren't a part of their core audiences and getting these snippets of them and saying hey these guys are disgusting let me do a deeper dive into how they're such a bigger platform it's gone to a mainstream sphere where a lot of people can criticize them to be honest with you if you think self-hatred and disparaging comments are funny like if that seems to be the crux of who you are or your identity then i got news for you buddy you are not funny if you don't like black women if you don't like white women if you don't like trans people if you don't like gay people these things can be fine i guess some of them are preferences some of them are just obvious disguised as comedic genius but don't make it seem like we're crazy for calling you out when you have the phobia or the belief or the disgust and say that hey i'm just telling a joke no that's not how these things work when i saw john use the joke as an excuse this incident i instantly thought of dave chappelle and his transgender jokes dave chappelle went on netflix special after netflix special after netflix special where he called out transgender people and had his own comedic spin on it that everybody thought was so intelligent and so insightful because it was dave chappelle well after the fourth fifth sixth 20th joke of the transgender people that dave chappelle got off with them being the butt of the joke i'm not gonna lie there were a great amount of people who thought to themselves yeah, it's almost like you're kicking a dead horse and you're getting off these right-wing conservative talking points. And if that's the audience that you're pitching to, hey, you're gonna get a laugh somewhere. But at some point, you're gonna come off as some crotchety old man and not the genius that people thought you were when you were making The Chappelle Show. It's no longer shits and gigs. It's no longer for the laughs. It's just hatred with a microphone and a name behind it that has comedy attached to it. And you're trying to get it off and it's not working in 2024. We're on the dance floor and there was a chick that was, that was looking good, squeezed a bit of bottom flesh and <laughs> the guy the thing that's jarring for me about that video is like the casualness at which she says it but he's just like yeah i walked up to a girl and i grabbed her ass that's sexual assault he's literally telling a story about how he walked up to someone and grabbed them in front of their boyfriend it's the men who will laugh and joke about this kind of thing who will end up being the ones to do it and the reason they laugh and joke about it is to normalize it look you can only put so much underneath the umbrella of comedy especially when you're doing it at other people's expenses some of this stuff a lot of this stuff Look, all of this stuff isn't funny. I'm not going to lie to you. Apparently, the Shits and Gigs podcast doesn't even make the most funny stories. They take other people's shared experiences, their stories, Reddit posts, whatever, read them on their platform and get the laughs out of it. And look, I get it. That can be funny at times, but we really got to decipher who is funny, who's not funny, who is entertaining, who's not entertaining. And mm. these guys who have these sorts of patterns and backgrounds, I would not say are funny at all. Now, after the incident, naturally, these guys were sweating profusely. They're oh, they want they let me get they made like an apology video or something audiences the new eyes that were getting on them looked at them in total disgust as they should so naturally they're gonna put out an apology yep. they were uh, yep i knew it they're gonna put out an apology video Ugh. a few jokes made that were incredibly inappropriate incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women yep. andrew was making a frankly like racist joke and we were laughing at it. that obviously there's just literally no excuse when you're in those situations you you look at it through a lens of like bro if it was me i promise you i'll stand up i'll kick them cameras down yeah. i'll smack homeboy in the face but when you're in there you're in shock you're in shock and all you want to do is move on yeah, yeah now the apology in a vacuum may have seemed like a great idea of course you got to save face in these situations and i would love to give the brothers some sort of applause for that because they did give a reasonable excuse as to why they did the things that they did psych I'm how about the same bro <laughs> 
not giving them a damn thing because everything about these guys does not happen in a vacuum it is a pattern after they did their apology they went and scrubbed a hundred earlier episodes from their podcast now somebody will probably ask why is that such a big deal well it's a big deal because they knew people were going on their backtracking tour and they knew that they said nasty things and again one episode or two wouldn't matter but a hundred episodes that you felt the need to delete from your catalog is that's is crazy yeah they yes yeah, yeah yeah low-key bro they low-key hang black a crazy concept think about that i mean well any... low-key don't prefer blacks you mean to go with or something like that i guess something like that any other entertainer creative perspective artist or whatever do you ever see an artist delete a hundred songs from their catalog an author delete a hundred books from their catalog if they do if they in and even if they are they're clearly hiding something if someone doing something like that like rappers they like trying to like delete something clearly they hiding something and they know it might gonna go a, a certain way that they don't want it to go and interpretations and things Log, a painter delete a hundred paintings from their repertoire people would look at them as a crazy person this is an example of hiding evidence and it's lacking true accountability if like anything that. you should be forthcoming with what's going on so when people find it they are not totally blindsided but you doing this under the heat of the moment saying oh can i get this off as if nobody would see was not only stupid but really showed who you are as people your babies hell your birds at this point you keep flying over and past these situations instead of spearheading them and addressing them and speaking of flying past the accountability ducking dodging and evading and all those things you only look stupider in the light because andrew schultz the man that i gotta give a little bit of praise and applause for came out and outed you for the bullshit apology that you did they had shit that they asked to take out the episode you know what they didn't ask to take out your racist slander they had shit their 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 producer whatever was like hey we really think that's inappropriate we'd like to take that out but with that joke about the black women nothing nothing really seemed the fight or flight wasn't really there dang i get because they know you're gonna get it like i get because they know the social media is going that gonna get a whole lot of buzz and clicks and engagement and stuff i wouldn't even want this no what that's crazy bro they thinking backwards they literally walked in your trap, took over your trap, and proved you to be the sellouts that you are. Everybody knows that when you do these pre-recorded things, these podcasts, you have multiple takes. You have the opportunity after to tell what things need to be edited, what things need to be corrected, stop, fixed, do it in post, or whatever the case may be. But apparently, you did not do that in this instance. You took the opportunity to do it in other instances, but not this one. Why? Because that's how you feel. That's who you are. Even when given a second chance, you still prove to be a dickhead. James and Fuhad are receiving backlash after they were on a podcast with Andrew Schultz and they nervously laughed at some jokes he made about black women. Basically, people are saying that they should have protected black women more and stood up for them instead of just sitting there laughing at the jokes. But this double standard is just not making much sense to me. A week ago, it was perfectly fine for Angel Reese and all these other black women to not protect black men and talk about how they'd be happier with a white man. Now this TikTok user almost brought up a good point if he wasn't such a dumbass. I wouldn't define this type of laughter as some sort of nervous laughter in the situation. I don't know if people saw that video that Angel Reese reposted last week about this black woman being fed up with black men so you gotta escape to get a white man or whatever the case may be, but that video was also dog shit and horse water. Horse shit and dog water? Whatever it was, it was trash. She should be reprimanded. That's not something that should be put on the internet. People should be protecting people full stop. Black women should protect black men black men should protect black women at all costs that's just my personal belief and i know everybody doesn't subscribe to that but i'm here to say i do but even greater that's what I was, yeah you know everybody's different than that participating in this well they did it so i can do it too does nothing for the conversation but further the divide be the person that doesn't engage with it or criticizes both of it and i would take this twitter user more seriously if he was criticizing both ends of the spectrum equally but to pit them both against each other and say hey make a decision between these two is stupid now i agree angel reese shouldn't have did that and it does look bad on her that is a very 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 shameful thing that she did and she should be reprimanded and talked to about that i think what adds this extra level 
level of cinnamon spice and none of that was nice to the shits and gigs podcast is because i know a lot of black women consume their content along with black men they portrayed themselves to be an equal opportunist podcast and not something that was just for one thing i'm not saying that angel reese didn't play basketball for the men but a lot of her content is geared to and catered towards just women she is never posed to be some sort of ally i don't believe that to be the case but i also do not have this pattern of angel reese shaming and shitting on black men as i do for the shits and gigs podcast i can't have sympathy for those guys i don't really have sympathy for angel reese either but i definitely don't have sympathy for these grown-ass men saying these things and brushing it off as comedy year in and year out look they've got a lot of damage control to do but i highly advise people to take people for who they are we've seen youtubers destroy their catalogs and their audiences before like the watcher early this year when they said they were going to put everything behind the paywall and i still think that they're trying to bounce back from that situation so maybe these guys take a hit and bounce back i don't know it would be pretty hard for me to believe that they can ultimately though if you have a large female or male audience don't bash them i think it's as simple as that no i said the most transformational thing today but boy oh boy those guys are jackass and there you go ladies and gentlemen yo i don't know who them guys is but yo they 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 in trouble but you already know link about the description all that good stuff i'm not